Hello, friends, and welcome to Conversational Witchcraft with me, Dawn the Kitchen Witch. And today we have uh, an old friend, not an old friend, it's definitely, this is person is definitely not what I would call old, but a friend that has been in our lives for a while. Uh, get ready to be spellbound by the glam witch michael herkus makes magic across the windy city of chicago as a genderqueer author astrologer intuitive stylist tarot reader and glamour witch say that 10 times fast after practicing privately for two decades michael stepped out of the broom closet and into the role of teacher dedicating their energy to uplifting and mentoring others on using witchcraft for self empowerment empowerment. Since then, they have authored seven books, written a variety of digital content, presented workshops across the U.S. as a speaker on the art of witchcraft and glamour. That's how I'm going to say it from now on. Through this, they've made a name for themselves as the glam witch, known for their bubbly personality, an eccentric flair for caftans, kimonos, and the color pink, and the powerful transformative magic. Focusing primarily on glamour magic, Michael's practice centers around magical aesthetics and adornment, using fashion and makeup to cultivate inner and outer makeovers, inspiring others to tap into their personal power and creativity to manif manifest positive change in their own lives and the world around them. Michael Herkus, the glam witch. Yeah. Hi. Hi. We need to write you a jingle. I, we, I, I know. I need it. I need you, a little song. You need, you need like a, you know, we've got to, we got to totally. like, there needs to be more like fanfare around you. Oh my God. I, I would love that. Yes. You, I mean, you walk into a room and you're a party. Like that, that is true. Yes. That's true. How are I you, my friend? Thanks for being I'm here. Good. I'm good. I'm so happy to be back. I so love chatting with you. It's always so fun. I'm so happy to have you. We've tried to like connect a couple of times and, and this I canceled. is the first time that we did it too. It was like a miss, a miss, a miss. Finally. I know. So three, much fun. Three times yeah, the exactly. charm. Exactly. exactly. I want everyone to know that as we're, as if you're watching this, if you're watching this as a video and not just listening to it, I want, or, or just listening to it. I want everybody to know how gorgeous you look with your makeup and your, your, your gorgeous pink nails and your lipstick. Like I put on eye makeup for you this morning. <gasps> Thank you. Okay. Well, let's, I have to let's... say I'm going to Beyonce later today. So like, instead of like trying to get ready twice, I'm like ready now. You're going to Beyonce tonight? Tonight. I'm, sp I'm I know. speechless. I'm speechless. Renaissance tour. Let's do it. Oh my God. That's going to be outstanding. Cannot wait. So excited. So is that, so like you said, you don't want to have to, because if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. So, Correct. right. So are you ready now for going there, going to see her? Yes. Today? We'll do a quick little, a touch up, but like, I'm like, I'm not going to like redo myself. That's silly. So I'm just going to be ready all day. So here's a question. Okay. Is there any, for something as amazing, glamorous and, and, and outstanding as Queen Bee, Will you do any kind of a glamour ritual before going to see her? Will you, besides the fact that you've already done your makeup and all of that, like, is your pre-game for something so fabulous a magical thing? Or are you just going to like, you know, take a couple of drinks and, and get wild? Yeah, the latter, the latter. She's <laughs> taking the day off. Then <laughs> which is off today. She's having a good time. I no, I don't know. I'm probably going to wear this other outfit that's more sequins like and I love wearing sequins because to me that is it's glam armor like it's so fabulous because it it you know it, it brings in the looks people will turn their heads towards you but at the same time it pushes negative energy away so it allows you to have fun because they're little mirrors and they can deflect so I'll probably just wear that and I'll be a, a shiny little disco ball and go have a fabulous time I never really thought about wearing reflective clothing as a mirror spell like yeah. I do mirror spells like especially when I'm going around people I know are going to be assholes uh -huh. I'll do a shielding before I go right and I'll do yeah. that mirror spell um or, or 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 visualization but I never thought about using clothing 
Yeah, it's one of the reasons why, like, when I do, like, um, if I'm at a festival or something in person where I'm presenting, I'm always in sequence. Because it's just, I don't want the the negativity to latch on. You know what I mean? Like, deflect that back out. I love that so much. And again, like, mm-hmm. I never would have, I never would have thought of that. I'm, I love shiny things, but I don't tend to, they're, I don't, they're the best. They're the best. I don't, I don't tend to wear them. Um, and I think that just comes from not wanting to be looked at in public, mm-hmm. you know, like I don't want to draw attention to my body, but what I learned from you is the confidence to say, you know, this is me. And that's kind of like, what will you talk about in a lot of your work, right? Is, mm-hmm. is using glamor magic to create confidence. So for those people who may have not heard your last interview with me or who didn't, who, who aren't familiar with you, can you just like give like a two sentence synopsis of what is glamor magic or glamor witchcraft? Oh, totally. So glamor magic is, um, it is a type of enchantment that is uh, connected as like, especially to your appearance. It's all like, like linked into aesthetics and presenting yourself in a certain way for you to make magic with in whatever way that is. So it can be on one hand, it could be manipulative, right? I mean, it could be, I want someone to see me in a a better light so I can get a job or I can, you know, I'm, I'm really trying to go out with this person and I really want to make the right move and I'm glamoring myself to present myself in a better light. Um, it could be for friends. It could be for a lot of different things. Um, but it, it, it is magically altering your energy to bring in attraction to you or deflect it away and push it away. Negative. I think a lot of times people think glamour magic is only about bringing in, but a lot of times it's also, I don't want that. I don't want any of that. So. Wow. Wow. And, and like you said, it's, it's perceptive, right? So Mm -hmm. it's how we perceive ourselves creating a space or, or a way in which we perceive ourselves, but also how others are perceiving us. Correct. Right. And I also think too, so like a lot of people would consider glamour magic an illusionary type of magic. Like it's false. You're creating something out of nothing, but I don't agree with that. I think it's more illusion with the, with the A instead of the I, because to me, it's, it's all about alluding to something else that's there. It exists in the world. It's just, you're shifting it a little bit. You're changing it in some kind of a way. Say like Halloween, right? Like If you go to a Halloween costume party and you're in an outfit, like that's kind of what glamour magic is to me, right? And so it can't be fake. It can't be illusionary because it's so real. It's ingrained in like real work. You have to be aware of your audience. They have to know what it is that you're trying to glamour. If they don't, it's going to fall flat. Mm -hmm. I always feel like, um, and and, and this is like super basic and not really magical, right? But like... um, in terms of like my own aesthetic and my own appearance. Mm -hmm. I have always been a person who has body image issues. I'm a big girl. I'm a round girl growing up in a world where, you know, uh, my body type is not the ideal, right? I don't fit those, those, um, traditional, uh, you -hmm. know, beauty standards. Right. And I think a lot of us feel that way, but I've always felt like I'll accentuate the positive to draw the eye away from, not just your eye, but my own eye away from the parts I don't like. Right. So I have very nice hair. I have very pretty eyes. I have fantastic boobs. So I want to show those things off. Yeah. Maybe I don't want people to look at my stomach area or my legs area. Would you say that glamour magic is the same kind of thing? Like you said, it's illusion, not illusion. I'm not fooling you, but I'm drawing your eye. Correct. Yeah. I think that that's definitely one way to, to look at it and channel that energy. Um, 100%. Absolutely. I love it so much. So um, you talk a lot about confidence and glamour magic, right? And, and confidence and magic, equal, like confidence plus magic equals glamour. And you kind of explain in your own experience how working with glamour magic has transformed your confidence? Mm, I love this question. It's it's kind of loaded. Um, yeah, go there. Go there. Well, it's very weird. So, like, I've been, of, of course, practicing witch for a very, very long time. Um, but I was mostly doing it, like, solitary, by myself. I went to this magical, fabulous festival called Hexfest, 
um, in 2017. New and Orleans, saw, New Orleans. Yes. I saw all these people doing all these wonderful things. And that's like when I was there, I uh, met some new friends and we all went to a bar afterwards and they were like, you have to start teaching people how to be glamorous. Like witches need to start looking glamorous. And I was like, yeah, I agree. And they're like, you are the glam witch. And I was like, oh, I am. I like that, that word. So um, I kind of got named there that. And um, and I got connected to Witchway Magazine at that point, started writing, doing all of this. And so the whole process of, I mean, if, if people have kind of been around since my beginning of coming out, you'll see that there's this kind of transformative art. Like I created the glam witch in its own way is a, it's a magical persona. It is a glamour. It's something that I created and it's it helped me evolve into who I am today, mm -hmm. um, if that makes sense. Like, it, if we look back at who I was then, it's like, okay, you are just a gay man wearing a sequins blazer. But like, you, I really evolved and turned into more of a non-binary presentation. Um, it helped me kind of understand what my gender stereotypes and stuff are. Um, mm -hmm. It helped me evolve into this uh, and find the confidence within to just fucking do it. Like right. I was, it was, I was telling someone yesterday because I'm always wearing heels now and they're like, bitch, could you wear some sensitive shoes, like sensible shoes? Like stop wearing these crazy ass heels that like hurt your feet. And then we all got to slow down for you or some stuff. And I was like, I just watched the, the new Barbie movie. And I was like, listen, I've had flat feet. I've been flat foot Barbie for 30 years of my life. And I'm not, going back to flats like I will wear heels for the next 30 years I don't care if they hurt um it, it's just it's the I don't know creating creating the glamour of the glam witch has just given me the audacity to be 100% myself um and and own how I'm dressing and um it's just to me dressing up is fun you know every day mm -hmm. I get to be a new character I get to Mm -hmm. and, and at the same time, I have my signature styles. You know, it's it's all about the caftans. It's about the pink. It's about all of these things. And and it just, I don't know. Self-expression is so lovely. And I've said to you, before I'm a witch, before I'm anything, I'm an artist. So creativity is like really anchored in that as well. And um, having the opportunity to paint myself, paint a new canvas every day and share it with the world has been lovely. And um, yeah. I, I talk a little bit too in, in the new book on, on glamour magic too. Like you can use your aesthetic and the flashy clothes and all of that to further propel spellcraft, whatever it is that you're wanting to do. Like if we think about the idea of rising energy in a spell, if we look at the formula of doing magic, like to me, the rising energy part is after. I do the spell work, I'll wear the clothing that draws in the attention and I can use other people's energy to help stimulate what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. Right. Because you, you have elevated the way you feel and you've used the clothing, the adornment, the makeup to, to basically like, I don't want to say trick your mind, but to, um, you know, you, you feel different when you're dressed a certain way, you, you hold your okay. head higher, you, your you shoulders feel roll back, like you feel good. Right? I'm like, oh my God, this fabric, it feels so nice on me. Like I right. love it, I'm comfortable. Or even when it's uncomfortable, it still looks good. And you're like, oh my God, the sequence is digging into my neck and it's going to like leave a scar, but it's okay. I look fabulous. Right. And and you're thriving on how you, you, you know, you catch a glance of yourself in the mirror and you're like, oh, oh, who's that? Oh, wait, it's me, you know, <laughs> like, yes. and so you're and elevating. I think, I think just that in and of itself helps you in any magical work that you're trying to do. I mean, our spells are going to be more powerful, the more self-assured and confident we are, no matter what. And uh, like, we are just visual people. It just is, uh, that's humans. We are visual. We like things that look good. We like things that look bad because we give energy to it. And that's another thing too. Like when I'm out on the street, it's 50, 50, like, oh my God, I love your outfit or disgusting looks. But it doesn't matter to me because even that like snarled lip from like certain people, it's energy and I can use it. Energy's not good or bad or negative. It's how it's it's shot out. And like, if you learn how to take that and manipulate it for your benefit and gain, like that's glamour as well. I want to go back to something you said, because I think it's very, very important, especially right now in the world. And you talked about um, self-expression, right? And this is you, your individual self-expression is caftans and sparkles and makeup and, you know, and it is who you are. It doesn't matter 
uh, how you identify with your gender. It doesn't matter, you know, how you identify with your sexuality. It's how you want to present your being, right? And and I think that's an important thing because I think there is a misconception and stop me if I'm wrong, that glamour magic has to be glamorous. It has to be about makeup and it has to be about high heels. Listen, I worked in the interior design field for a hundred years before I was a professional witch. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was all about appearance. It was all about who's wearing what jewelry. It's all about high heels and clothes and especially in New York where I was doing this. Oh, of course. Right. And I fucking hated it. I fucking hated it. And, And now as I'm in my forties and I have my own business and, you know, my self-expression of what I want to wear, what makes me feel comfortable and beautiful is very different, right? It's more, I don't want to be constricted. I don't want to be in high heels. I want to be in flowy dresses and flat sandals with my hair in the wind. Yes. And no one would say that's glamorous. So can you tell? You would. Can you, can you like bunk that misconception for us and, and, and talk a little bit about how glamour can be different? Well, I think it's, um, it is, it's an interesting misconception. Yes. And I think it also kind of stems from just the fact that glamour magic is, is literally something we do every day. Every single one of us, we get up, we look in the mirror, we put our clothes on, we do all of it. Like if you start creating rituals around all of that, that's where like the real glamour lies. But I, like what I say to people so many times is the first thing that we do, and I'm guilty of it too. You mm-hmm. wake up in the morning, you look in the mirror and it's, oh, I don't like that. Oh my God, I have a zit. Oh, this is gross. Da, 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 da. Uh. But if you're a magical person, you've been doing this for a long time. You don't necessarily need the spellcraft all that much anymore. Like your thoughts create your reality. If you're mm-hmm. looking to a mirror, which is a magical thing, it's a very mundane thing, but it's very magical. And you're telling yourself in your head or even out loud, like, oh, that's ugly or I'm not great you're literally casting a spell on yourself of negativity. You just are. And so I always say, like, shift it. Shift it to, oh my God, I have the pretty hair, like what you were saying earlier. Or, oh my God, I love my eyes. Oh, I look fabulous today. Oh, I love this. It's, in a way, self-love. Um, it's it's kind of a, it's underneath, I guess, I guess glamour is underneath the umbrella of like love magic and self-love and stuff like that. Um, but it, I mean, I think stereotypes exist within fashion from a negative place because, oh, I don't know, this is a really loaded question. I can go so many different ways. Um, unfortunately, society puts a negative idea on fashion. We absorb it. We take it in. We think it might be superficial. We do all of that. And I just think it's just another tool for us to have fun. It's another tool to express ourselves. It can be whatever the hell you want it to be. Glamour magic for you might not be all of this. It might be a hoodie and some yoga pants and feeling comfortable. Like, and that's fabulous. That's where it works for you. It's not me, but it it works for you. Um, I think I had heard that there's like another author that's writing a new glamour magic book. And it's very, very different from mine because they're going in a way of like, it's not all about the art of this. It's not about the pretty stuff, but that's what makes me feel glamorous. So I kind of share that with other people, but it, again, I'm, I'm not wanting or expecting people to come out here and, and try to be the glam witch, like in this right. whole ensemble, it's whatever it is that you want to make it. And listen, there's days I'm off too. And I'm in a hoodie and yoga pants right. going to the grocery store to buy my altar candles and all of that. And a box but of macaroni time, and cheese. Like this, exactly. the, the, it is what it is. Well, say the Where same I'll roll thing about- into the airport. I'm going somewhere and I'm literally in like six inch stilettos and a whole sequins gown. And people are like, who is this bitch? So <laughs> it's, it's, I don't know. It's, it's glamorous. It's on a very mundane level. It's subjective. It is, it is whatever the hell you want it, whatever it is that you want it to be. I mean, I even extend it, and you might get this too because you're the kitchen witch, so you like food and all of that stuff. And and I love it. I think that there's a glamour element to cooking magic and stuff too. Mm. And I'm not a big sweet person. Like I I don't love the sweets, but other people do. Yeah. So I look at it in the same capacity with like what what it is that you're wearing. It's like whatever nourishes you and feeds that creative creativity in you. Put it out there for the world to see and be proud of it. 
I think it's one of the things that's so important about what you teach and what you talk about. And, and really I have to commend you and, and congratulate you because you are what you are. You walk your walk, you talk your talk, you are this person. You're not someone else who's pretending to be this, right? And and yeah. that's, that's really important. Um, you're not out here being like, oh, I dress this way because I'm going to do an interview or a class. Like, no, this is who you are when you're going out with your friends or like you said, going to the airport. And I think yeah. that's incredibly important, especially right now in our world when you know mm -hmm. people who are different are being called out and threatened and, um, mm -hmm. you know, it, it could be very dangerous. So, so I want to just take a moment and be like, Hey, listen, you are setting a huge example and we appreciate your, your candor and your bravery and being who you are. Um, no one should have to hide their Excel, their self-expression. Um, yep. so Thanks. just take, Take that for what it is, because it is important. It's, it's funny that you said this, because I just had a conversation with a friend of mine, and they, and I, it's something that I wasn't really cognizant of until they brought it up to me, but they were like, Michael, you get that you, just your existence and what you're doing is activism. It's Absolutely. activist magic. You are saying fuck the world by going out there and being yourself. Correct. And I was like, that's cool. I never looked at it that way, because I'm just, I'm just trying to have fun, right, and live my life. And so a lot of times there isn't that, that realization of like, oh my God, like I really am out here middle fingering the patriarchy and all of the other crap that's going on. It was a little cognizant when I just saw the Barbie movie, which is so fabulous. Everyone should go see it. But it, it was looks like, really good. It looks really oh my good. God. It, it was so good. But um, I love what you just said about like the fakeness of it because mm -hmm. there is an element of glamour that is that idea of, of fakeness. Um, and I always say like kind of, I kind of break down glamour into creating a magical persona because that's really what it is. It's very similar to creating a brand if you're in business and you're out here, you know, presenting yourself, but it's more of a, how do I word it? I say glamour magic is like your magical resume. It's your, it, you're showcasing all of your best traits. But if you're looking for a job, right, there's some times where it's like, let me like highlight something, but in a, a more fabulous way, right? Mm -hmm. So it catches attention. Glamour is the same way. Um, and my whole philosophy of, of glamour is creating this magical persona. And I always say that like, you know, that that silly little thing that we all jump on the bandwagon of at least once a year where it's like, these are the three characters that define who I am. I say, take that approach. Think about the three characters that you are, that represent you. Um, why do you like them? Study why what they do. What outfits are they wearing? What is it that you love about them that resonates with your personality? But also, what do they have that you don't have? And how can you make that shine through with what you do have? And configure out of these three characters the, the persona of whatever glamour it is that you're trying to do. So that's more like what I did with the Glam Witch. That's how I kind of created all of it. Right. But it is, in the beginning, at least, it definitely takes a lot of visualization. Mm -hmm. And again, you have to own it. You have to make sure people understand the reference. So it's like, you can't fake it. Glamour can't be fake because of the amount of work that you have to put into doing it. Right, and I think that's the difference between like, there are plenty of people uh, in the world, and I, I know quite a few that are, uh, makeup and clothing obsessed. And it's always with the hair and it's always with the nails. And it's like, who the fuck are you? Like this, because it's not, I'm doing this as a self-expression. It's I'm doing this to get attention. And I think those things yeah. are very different. And somebody might be like, you're over. That's what I mean when I'm saying like, you are genuinely who you are. You're not doing this to get attention. Perhaps you like the attention you get, but you're not doing it for that reason. You're doing it because like you said, you're an artist, you're a witch. This is how you express yourself. This is spellcraft. This is a ritual. This is how you have created the person that you are confidently to walk through the world. Yeah. Talking about what you do, teaching what you do, being who you are in a brave, uh, unapologetic way. And then over here in this corner, there's maybe somebody who's just painting a face dyeing their hair, dripping in, in, you know, rhinestones and is like, look at me, look at me. And that's not, 
glam craft. That's not correct. It's not. It's or not even correct. like I've, I've said it a lot recently because I like I just met someone who is very much a walking billboard for fashion brands. It was mm. nothing but my earrings say Chanel. Look at my shirt. It says Prada. It was like you're or like you're I'm not impressed by that. Billboard. And I, neither am I. And, and someone did ask me there. They were like, I noticed like, you're not really like into like mainstream fashion brand names. And I was like, no, because I'm not a billboard. And that's what it is. It's just, it's just always someone else's logo. And that's cute. That's their magic. That I think is very much magic. And I think that these fashion designers and all of that are a little tapped into the occult and all of that. But it's like their logo is the sigil. They're getting energy by other people wearing it. They're not only getting money, but they're getting energy and it's keeping it alive. Wow. But that's not me. I'd rather work with fabulous local designers or people that are like making beautiful stuff. Like literally every single piece of, of caftan in my closet at this point is from this amazing designer, Jennifer Grace from San Diego. And there's so much like they're handmade goods that are usually one of a kind pieces that so much love was put into it. It's not just a, uh, like an inventory that's not the right word but like factory made mm -hmm. garbage like right you're not going like look at me i'm so great because everything i own is, is says prada on it like i know as a status but also, what symbol. does that mean to you what does it mean to you and i think a lot of times it is it, i mean and there's nothing wrong with that i, I do want to back up the bus and say that there's nothing wrong with it it's, it's not my glamour but to some people it is sure. and i think a lot of times it it represents success and it represents a certain status and a mm -hmm. symbol for that. And that gives them confidence. And listen, whatever makes you feel confident, go out and do it. Right. But it just doesn't work for me. Right. But I resonate with it because of like what we were just saying, where it's like, there isn't that fakeness with me. I'm not wearing other people's labels mm -hmm. for stuff. I'm trying to do my own thing. Um, Are you able to kind of like root out that, that fakeness? Like when you see somebody who's like, oh, I'm, I'm totally in a glam magic, but they're not, they're just, you know, they're just face and nails and clothes, but they're not doing it with intention and purpose. Of course. In the same way that it's just, you know, oh my God, I just got into magic. I like watch TikTok every day. And I have been like a practicing witch for two weeks. Let me show you my new book that I just wrote. Yeah. Right. It's that same fucking thing. <laughs> yeah. I and you look really that was kind of mean, but it is true. No, it's true. Uh -huh. It is true. And and I think it is important that those of us that are, like you said, genuine are 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 being outspoken about our practices and and you know, trying to help other people find those paths and be like, well, that's that's yeah. very nice little baby TikTok witch. Let, come over here and let's have a conversation about what this really looks like. You know, like, like you love makeup and I'm a glam witch. So let me teach you a little ritual that here, read this book, not that book. Like, I think that's really, really important. Um, like, I don't, I don't want to say like we're elders, but like, we've been doing it a while. We know what we're talking yeah, about. You know what we're talking about. Well, I think too, it's important to remember that like the clothing, the cosmetics, the hair, everything that you're putting on, they're just tools. They're another tool, mm -hmm. like your athame, your chalice, all of the different things. And you can harness the energy that you're working with with them. It's not, how do I word it? I think so many people give the power to the clothing, but you like need to remember that you are the power and it's the instrument. And so I think that's, that is, I think where that kind of disconnect is or where it's like, oh my God, yeah, I'm like, I'm so, I'm wearing all of the makeup. I'm doing all of these things. Oh, look at my new shoes. And it's just kind of like, Okay, but where's the magic and all of that? Like, how are how are you directing it? Where, think, yes, go on. Because the magic doesn't come from the things. The magic comes from you. Correct. And yes. you are using the things to help channel the magic, not the yes. other way around. Yes. Is that correct? Absolutely. And I think that that's another reason why glamour magic, people don't give it the credit that it deserves. We're, mm. We all do it. We do it whether, like I said, we whether we like it or not, we wake up in the morning, we look in the mirror, we look in the mirror 700 times a day. Mm -hmm. um, but glamour magic really is about you being the tool. It's you. You are that instrument. And you have this symphony of aesthetics that you can put on. And mm -hmm. like, if it's a crystal, right? It's a jewelry piece. And it's that crystal has magic. Of course, you can use that and, and work with it in your magical aura. But it's it's just, 
I don't know. I think at the end of the day, it really is you. It, mm. And that's what I think about it. I'm like, when I go out and I, I get the, oh my God, you look so great and the compliments and everything that comes through all day long, it's, it, I, I've learned that it's not what I'm wearing because I still get it when I'm dressed down. So fun, interesting little side note. In February, I went to Prague to this uh, meditation retreat. And I followed beautiful. you. I stalked your whole thing when you were posting everything. Yes. It looked, it looks tra- it it was, transformative. It, it really was did. a very transformative vacation. Um, but I, I really didn't want to like, cause I had gone to Prague before and my luggage was lost. So I was not <sighs> trying to do all that this time. And so I was like, I'm just going to have my little weekend back. I'm wearing like two jumpsuity caftan items. Like that's all I have. It's a yoga retreat and we're in the woods. Like, I don't need to be glamorous. But the funniest thing was, is that everyone talked about the glamour that I had. I didn't have makeup on. I wasn't doing nothing like my normal self. But they all saw it, the whole class, the teacher, the instructor. She talked about it. Thank you for bringing the beauty. And that was the big wake up call. It's so weird that 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 was it. And that was just this February. That like, it's not about my clothes. It's not about that. My energy is beauty and wherever I go, I don't have to wear all of this. I do it because I like it. It's fun. It's a, it's a way for me to tap into my own creativity. It's a way for me to feel excited and, and all of that. But it was a great reminder that like that aura, that energy, that glamour that I'm projecting, it exists whether I'm in fancy clothes or not. It's just who you are. It's yeah. just what is spilling out of you is, is beauty and glamour and, and, you know, gorgiosity. Oh, I love that word. You know, I just, I can't help it. Gorgiosity. I don't know what I wouldn't know That's what the else book to, title at some point in my life. Right. I, it's the, I don't know what else to call it. I, I want to go back to something you said just a minute ago, where you were talking about, we look in the mirror a hundred times a day. Yeah. And I want to address that specifically because what we're not talking about are people that don't look in the mirror a hundred times a day, people who are uncomfortable with their bodies, people who maybe have been shamed about their bodies, people who don't feel they belong in the body that they were born in, um, mm-hmm. people that have had uh, trauma to their bodies, you know, um, injuries, damage, things like that. What kind of advice would you give to those people through the lens of glamour magic for self-confidence? It's a fabulous question. Um, Honestly, something I haven't thought of before. Um, I guess what I would recommend is, let's break it down to the very fundamental component of what's gonna make you happy? How do you have fun? What is it that you're liking? Like, screw the world, screw what society is saying. But what do you like? What do you want to do? Um, how do I word it? Like, COVID was, a, like, a really great way for me. Like, I'll, I'll shift it to COVID and what happened there. So COVID, we were all locked in our houses. We could never go out. We, mm-hmm. What was there to do? But that's really where this level of the glam witch came from. Like, that's where I started wearing more of a non-binary outfit. And... Nobody could tell me anything because I was doing it in my own home and I felt I liked it and I experimented. I started playing with makeup at that point. We couldn't go get our hair cut. So I had like longer hair. I bought yeah. extensions and I put them in. Um, I was really experimenting so much with, with my appearance and it didn't matter what society said anymore because I was having fun. So if you're, if you're able to find a way to shut the doors to the world and dabble experiment, try something. If it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work. Um, I'm trying to think too, you know, I just recently was asked to be a part of like a little photo shoot and in it, they wanted to do like this kind of before and after, like I'm this, but also wear a suit and kind of present yourself masculine. And, and you're like, I was That's like, not cool, me. Whatever. <laughs> I'm like, I, at the time I was like, oh, that sounds great. Like, yeah, let me show you the difference literally putting on like that type of attire. I had a whole panic attack. I don't know if anyone listening has watched Sex in the City, but it's very much 
that moment where Carrie goes to put on a like a bridal outfit and got hives from it. Like I had a full wow. allergic reaction to masculinity and it yeah. was weird. Um, I think that, I don't know, I can, your, your initial question where this is all kind of stemming from kind of makes me think of that. And it was just like, I turned down a very, very fabulous trip this year to Egypt because I'm like, I can't go there. Like, I'm not, and I'm not going to, like, I could present differently. Absolutely. But are you, I'm going to go and like follow the steps of Cleopatra, not in a caftan and heels, excuse me. Like, no, that's right. Right. That's that if shame. you, that that's if you couldn't go somewhere and be yourself, yeah. why should you go there? Exactly. So I do say something, I'm actually going to try to read it. So this is from my book. So in Glamcraft, the new book in the back, I kind of write these like, 13 covenants for like being a, a glam crafter. And one of them is trying to find it. Um, oh crap. Uh, okay. Cultivate your security. Certain plants require certain soil to grow strong and healthy. Anchor yourself in an environment that makes you prosper and removes toxicity from your life. This could be your relationship with your family, friends, or lovers. It could be your career. It could even be your physical surroundings. Do what you can to get out of things that do not work for you. Do what you can to securely and safely, like do what you can that can, can securely and safely allow you to bloom into your full potential. So important. So, so important. That very long-winded answer that finally got me to come to that is just do what you can to blossom and bloom. Give yourself the luxury uh, and that's glamour too. Glamour is also just luxury, whatever you, uh, however you connect to luxury in whatever way, like give yourself a day, like, and just experiment, do a magical makeover at home, try things on. I mean, have fun. Um, I think that that, if people could just start having more fun and really tapping into their creativity more, we would all be in a much better place. I think that's such such an important note to have, just fucking have fun, man. Like just, just have a good time because we take things very seriously. Right. Yes. And, and going back to the original thought of like, you know, what do you say to someone who doesn't want to look in the mirror or has image issues or, you know, maybe has had um, physical trauma to their body and, and, and that kind of thing. I, you know, I kind of say to myself, no one's looking at you. No one's, you know, you grew up thinking everybody's judging you. Everybody's looking at you. You're going to go to the beach in a bathing suit and all the people on the beach are going to make fun of you because you're a fat girl in a bathing suit. And I'm like, realizing as an adult, everybody on that beach is worried that they're going to be looked at as a fat girl in a bathing suit. It doesn't matter if they're size two or size 20. Everybody's worried about what they look like. Everybody, no, right, literally everyone. Right. Nobody cares. No, Nobody and a lot of times, and it's, it's so, it's like we, it's something that I think we all know. It's like, oh my God, like I feel so crazy today because I have this pimple, but then I go out and nobody sees it. Like nobody is paying attention to it. You are, it's, right. you're upset about it. So right. just like, let it go and, and laugh at it. You have to learn to laugh at yourself and have a good time. Everybody just, gets pimples. Like it's yeah. just, it's, you're a human being with skin. If you have skin, you will get a pimple. Like, I don't exactly. So it, why, it, why are you stressing? And the other thing is, we've all been there. So we it, all know what it fucking feels like. Like, right. we, I don't know. Right. But, um, Just have fun. Stop taking it so seriously. And when you do that, I, you can breathe a little into the magic of it. Yeah. But I also think that there's a lot of, um, and I, I, I hate using this term because I feel like it's been so butchered like a lot, especially in the magical community, but shadow work, you have to do shadow work. And it's not just, I'm going to sit in a room with all the lights off and a candle. It's, I'm going to have a therapist. I'm going to do the real life work too. I'm going to talk to people. I'm going to try to work on my trauma and I'm not perfect. Right. Like I have things that like have almost broken me, but I figured out how to maneuver all of that. And part of that was doing the real life work of talking to somebody. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Yeah. How, it, it's so frustrating when people are like, well, I'm just, I'm going through this awful stuff and I have all this childhood trauma, but I have these stones. 
and and when I made a tea and so I'm just I'm working with my guides and I'm like that's all awesome but are you seeing a therapist are you no. are you you know dealing with your emotional trauma are you no. learning life skills because all the tea and herbs and stones and spirit work that you want to do is not going to do shit if you're not handling your real life no it's so true you can have all of the crystals in the world and if you're not applying it it's so if we go back to like the witch's pyramid, that whole to know, to dare, to do da 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 Like the dare part, like everyone is kind of like those individuals, they're not daring. They're not actively seeking the real world stuff. It's, I was just watching Eat, Pray, Love the other day and I'm like, oh, this is such a good movie. It's, it's been years since I've saw it. But I love the quote where it's like, oh, please let me win the lottery. Well, just buy the ticket. Have you ever bought the ticket? And it's like, I, I talk about it in like the love spell book I've done. Like, you could do all the love spells in the world, but if you're not on the dating apps and you're not actually going out and you literally sit on the couch every night watching romantic comedies on Netflix, how are you going to manifest it? You have to do the real life work on top of the magical work right. or it's and, not going to work. Yeah. And what are you attracting? What are you attracting? Right. Exactly. If you're sitting here going, oh, I hate myself. I'm so ugly. Uh, no one's going to want me. And then even if you're on, on the dating apps. What do you put, like you said before, right? In the very first five minutes of conversation, you're yeah. talking about even negative energy is energy that's coming at you and what you're going to do with it, right? Mm -hmm. If that's the energy you're putting out, then guess what? That's what you're going to attract. If you want to attract something amazing and wonderful and beautiful and glamorous, that's what you need to be, right? Mm -hmm. And you can't do that unless you do the fucking shadow work. And by shadow work, we mean deep dive self-healing shit that no one wants to deal with. Like, look, no. look at the and ugly That's literally parts. like chapter two of the book. Like when we get to the nitty gritty of it, like the building blocks of glamour. Yes. You have to start with that confidence and it's not pretty. You have to get ugly. It has to get messy. It's like, we've seen those, those memes of like, everyone thinks that a spiritual awakening is the sun tarot card, but really it's a tower. Like- <laughs> It's, right. it's a mess. You have to allow yourself to get messy. And there is beauty in that mess. There's beauty in that anger. There's beauty in that frustration. And so like going back to even what I was mentioning, like my prog trip. So the woman that was running the, the event she was on, if anyone loved the show Xena back in the day, um, she was a, a very villainous character on it. Um, who's totally, and, and she worked out a lot of her negativity with that character, very much not like it anymore, but she's an astrologer and an intuitive reader. And I had a reading with her and she looked so far into my soul and handpicked, she, just, you have pain, you have this anger, you are beauty, but it's not useful until you deal with that stuff. You have to figure out how to do that. Otherwise you you've just come to this superficial point. You're at that point where you need to now make your glamour messy. You need to make it ugly. And wow. it was so intense, but true. Like it, it was true and I needed to hear it. And so for anyone watching or listening, get wow. messy, have fun with it. Wow. That is heavy, heavy shit. And on that note, we're going to take a quick break here from our okay. sponsors. And when we come back, we're going to talk about your latest book which is glam craft, which is awesome. Um, and everybody should get it. So uh, hold on. We'll be right back here from our wonderful sponsors. And we'll be right back with the glam, witch, Michael Herkes. We are back with the amazing glam, fabulous. What do we say? Gorgiosity. The, Gorgiosity. The Gorgiosity. Uh, Sounds like Michael a fabulous drag queen name. Like maybe that'll be my alter, my drag ego. Gorgiosity. I love it. Uh, Michael Herkus, the Glam Witch, and your brand new book, Glam Craft, which yeah. is so much fun. And this has been something you've been working on for a, a long time, this book. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's funny. I, I, I say that this is really technically my second book because, I mean, it is. I mean, I did the Glam Witch and then I wrote a bunch of books for another publisher and um, they were all pieces of witchcraft they're all things that I do but they weren't like me like they weren't as as um what's the right word um I can't think of the word uh personal that's it mm -hmm. it, it wasn't mm -hmm. a, a personal love like my first book which was about my entire 
upbringing as a magical being, like how I am a devotee of Lilith, how I use glamour to find self empowerment. And so I, when I did that and I named it the glam witch, um, it was like my introduction to the world, but I did, I knew I was like, I need a book on glamour magic. Mm -hmm. And so it, this book has taken like five flipping years to write. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm happy that it did because it was a huge undertaking. I had full, mm -hmm. co complete creative control. I designed the cover. I had a friend of mine illustrate things. Mm -hmm. I was the one that formatted the entire book. Amazing. Um, you know, uh, my editor, bless her heart for putting all the work that she did into it. But aside from that, all of the editing, I did the whole book by myself. Um, and I will never do it again because it was, <laughs> It was way too much flipping work um, and it, it, painful, yeah. but yeah, um, it was a labor of love and I loved it. And I wanted to do something different. I felt like a book on glamour has to be glamorous. It has to be pretty. It has to be full color. It should be a hardcover. It should be a coffee table book. It should be yes. a limited release of only 200 copies yes. because maybe not all information should get out there. Maybe, you know, for the people that have really followed me for a very long time, maybe they want, they need something special that they can have. So I, mm. I did this book for myself and I did it for the individuals that have really been like strong followers for a long time. And um, I, I, I loved it. This book was very fun to write. And it was also cool because it's split into three parts. So I have part one, that's just very practical glamour, whether a witch or not, you can take something from it, how to build confidence, how to become the main character of your own life, how to do your hair and makeup, how to pick out your clothing, how to summon a persona. And then you have part two, which is a grimoire. It's the full on, I can share too, for those who are like watching, but it's like, it's even scripted. Like, wow. The font, so it looks Look like that. A grimoire. It's the glamoire. That's that section. I love it. And, and then I finish with interviews from other witches because I didn't want it to just be my singular way of how I do glamour magic. I don't want anyone to ever think that like, you can't be a glam witch if you don't want to wear a feather boa and a sequins caftan. Like that's my way of doing it. So I invited a couple of, of different magical friends and, and people to write about their perspectives. So we have our, our mutual friend, Julia, who we, we crafted a, a glam craft potion in it. Ooh. like steps of doing it. What does it taste like? What do you want to evoke? Then we have Elise Marie, the beauty witch. She talked about holistic beauty. I then we have Alice, who did goth craft many years ago and just being a cisgendered gay man, but a man identifying individual who wears makeup. How, do, how does that work with masculinity? Mm -hmm. So we have that avenue. We have another um, guy who is so inspirational um, online. He does beautiful drag portraiture. He's a witch. He's another devotee of Lilith. And um, we've bonded with that, but his pictures were so beautiful. I was like, they have to be in a book. So let me interview on, you on that. And then Veronica Varlow about burlesque magic because she's a burlesque dancer. How can we not talk about burlesque? Um, and Lilith Dorsey, of course, voodoo. How, how, do, how do you work glamour and voodoo? So it was real. And I hope I'm not forgetting anybody, but I think that's oh everyone. Um, Amazing. But yeah, it was like, Amazing. I really, I wanted to do that. I wanted to spotlight individuals because some of my favorite writings you know anyone that that's kind of aware like I grew up like as a my literary high priestess was Fiona Horn um I loved all of her books and in a lot of them she did the same thing she had interviews with people and I loved that approach and I was like I'm gonna do that with this it's congratulations on the book it really is an amazing work and it is very different and I think that it is very you you know it's very much your brand of glamour witchcraft. And again, just like you are, Michael, just is very, very genuine and informative and yet compassionate and understanding that this is me, but it's not necessarily you, but if you want to do this, here's how, you know? Exactly. And also here's how I did it for myself. I think that that's important too, because you can write about something, but if you're not applying it to yourself as a guide for other people, yeah. it's weird by my one friend, Chris Allen, he just wrote a new witch book, but it was like a fictional book that had real witchcraft in it. And so what he, one thing that he's heard from people is like, they love that in the spells that this like character is doing, like he's actually like, oh, okay, well, 
how do I do this? Should I move this here? Like there's the actual questioning process, which we all do when we do magic. But like, I think having people see that like relaxes them and makes them realize I can do this. I can do it. Okay. You just told me like, yeah, you were kind of nervous to do this, but you just decided to do it. And here's, here's all the things that went wrong in the process of it, but (laughs) I still flip and did it. Right. So I, that right. gives encouragement to individuals. And I, I'm encouraged by seeing that same thing. Right. Amazing. So what do you hope like someone gets out of this book? What's your biggest hope that somebody buys this book, reads this book? What do you hope they walk away with? Um, I hope that they walk away with an understanding that of just have fun, learn to have fun, tap into your creativity and and love yourself and love what your presentation is. You, in a way you are a walking billboard, but for your own brand. So figure out what that brand is and show that to the world. Um, And when you do, you'll be so surprised at how that just attracts so many other things that you want to it. It's, it's, I think it's, it's living in a state of gratitude, but it's done differently. Instead of going around, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's just, I'm going to live authentically as me. I am going to show up and just do it. And I'm going to fail. I'm going to fall on my ass. <laughs> I did last week in some new heels and it was so embarrassing, but you know, I got up and I laughed and I was like, well, that was stupid. And right. I, I, everyone laughed at the same time. So I'm, I'm glad I gave you a giggle, but um, no, it's just, I don't know. I just told people like magic is very serious. It is a very serious thing. However, you have to love it. You have to love what you're doing. And you have to learn to laugh at yourself. I don't know. That That's what I hope that everyone gets from it. I think that's really important. And I don't think it's something that generally people talk about in witchcraft is it's, you can have fun. You can take it seriously and have fun and at the same be, time. But at the same time, why are you doing it? If it's not something that you're enjoying, Right. like there are going to be the bumps. Absolutely. That's how you grow. That's right. how you learn. You're going to fail. You're going to mess up. Right. But just laugh at yourself and learn to have fun. And I don't know. It, when you when you start approaching life in that way, what I've learned in the last couple of years while I've been out here as an author and stuff, it's it's just, it doesn't matter. Like, I, and I've, I've shared a little bit online, like this release, I was so excited for it. It was going to be a big splashy release, but it got completely messed up because the printers fucked up every single book all of them. And then it had to be, mm. they all had reprinted. So everyone was expecting their book in April. They didn't get it until July. Like it, it was embarrassing and such a mess. And I was just like, whatever. I, I mean, it is what it is. I laughed at it. It was frustrating, but luckily it's book seven. I've seen the messes that we deal with as authors, how things don't go according to plan. And I can sit here and scream and I can like, write rants online but what's that going to do nothing so nothing. yes let's just be honest about it yes. it was a very messy release somehow i really didn't look at the astrological situation of it releasing during a mercury retrograde which we as authors need to really start it happens we cannot release during mercury retrograde <laughs> no. we just can't. it's gonna be a it's it's gonna mess up it's, and if you are something's prepared, gonna happen yes. but i just this is a long, long, long way of just saying like, I don't know, it's, I'm happy that I've gotten to the point where I just learned that like, haha, it is what it is. I mean, I can't let it ruin my day. Um, but that's so important. And it's not just important in glam witchcraft or witchcraft or or magical work. It's important in life and the approach of, of looking at things in a way of, you know what, shit's going to happen. It's not... We as, as, as witches, we, as magical practitioners, we can control only us, only our intention, only the way we feel, not the way other people feel, not the way things are going to happen. It's how we respond to things. And I think oftentimes people think, oh, I'm a witch. I'm going to control everything. No, No, that's not how it works. You control you. There was a quote. I remember someone told me years ago and I loved it. It was, it's. I think a lot of people come into witchcraft thinking it's about being powerful, but it's more about empowerment. And so when you kind of flip the script with that, you really become powerful. Yes. That's what I did there. Uh Yes. Uh, No, a hundred percent. 
yeah, it's 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 interesting how everything works. But yeah. You are incredible. You are inspirational. You are so fucking gorgeous. Um okay. you it's okay. Yeah, you are. It's all right. It's okay. Um <laughs> the brows and the eyes it's a lot of work it's a lot of work but honey you're so pretty you're so pretty okay i i'm so grateful that you decided to come back on the show i'm so excited for this book for you i know how hard you've worked on it it's really really wonderful tell everyone where they can find you online and how to buy this book and all of your books yes uh well my website www.theglamwitch.com that will link to all of my social medias because all of those imposter accounts and craziness, like that will help you find the real me. Um, it will link to all of the places that you can buy my books. Um, all of my social medias do have links to where you can buy them as well. Um, right now, this is just a limited release. There was only 200 copies printed. Um, there are some left. There's about 70 left at, at the time of this interview. Um, so strike while the iron is hot. And, and get that's it important. That's yeah. important because we're interviewing right now. It's the summertime, but this episode is going to air in October. So, so and I was, there- I will, because originally I was like, no, we're, we're only doing 200 copies and like, we're done, but I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way to maybe have it come out in another capacity. Um, but not as a, a huge coffee table photography kind of a book, but th- maybe possibly there will be a, a smaller, paperback that comes out at some point a smaller run so run don't walk to get this book uh go online at theglamwitch.com and uh see michael and buy this book and uh you know maybe today after you hear this interview maybe put on a little extra makeup maybe comb your damn hair and uh you know feel good about yourself and go out and do something nice for yourself right yes Yes. And whatever that is, I remember, I like, it doesn't matter. It can be, yes, putting on heels and putting on something great, or it could just literally be going down the street to the bakery and having a decadent dessert, like mm. whatever feels glamorous to you, having a nice steamed bath, doing something mm. that makes you feel good, your mind, body, and soul. Grab a fancy cocktail. Yes. Right. Go outside, have a, fa- sometimes I'll go out on my deck. Cause I have a beautiful deck outside my, my kitchen. Uh-huh overlooking my gorgeous backyard and and just the act of walking out there barefoot with a drink and I'm like ooh I feel like I'm on vacation right like these little things that help us feel our uniqueness and enjoy yes. our unique experience right yes michael thank you so much for being here thank you for spending thank time you. with us of course i adore you i just fucking adore you and your gorgeousity thank you the feelings mutual darling mutual. we love you so. mutual, mutual. okay so last question you know it's coming yeah okay i don't know if you've changed your mind since the last time we talked but i have if you could have me cook you one magical meal what would it be and why so lately i have been on like a seafood craze and mm-hmm. so i would love you to do a Chilean sea bass for me. <gasps> Chilean sea bass. Yeah. No one's ever asked me for that. Oh, well, now they have. Chilean yeah. sea bass with a little spice and a little mango. Love it. Yes, let's do it. I'd have to figure out how to put something pink in there for you. Oh, I love that idea too. We need, we need something what like kind maybe, of pink sauce. like, or like a, beetroot risotto so we had something beautiful and pink to go with your chilean spicy sea bass with mango and just a pinch of cayenne pepper that's that's what you need honey oh i love it i love it so much i love it thank you again so much for being here everybody go check out michael herkes theglamwitch.com and go love yourself baby right until next time i'm gonna love yourself and the next until next time i wish you all the blessings and so much gratitude.